So you're stuck with a long layover in Beijing, and you're thinking about venturing out into the city. But hold up, before you get too excited, there is a catch. If your layover is shorter than eight hours, my route might not be the best option for you. I mean, let's be real. With the time you have to spend on the road, plus having a walk around Tiananmen Square and Forbidden City, you might not have much time left to get your connecting flight. Assuming you do have enough time, let's talk about transit rules. Because, as it turns out, it's not as straightforward as just falling out of the airport. First of all, the rules depend on a few factors, such as your nationality, final destination, and airline carrier. If you're lucky enough to be one of the countries that are eligible for visa free transit, then you're in luck, as you can spend up to 24 hours hanging out in the airport. However, if you want to explore the city, you need to get a transit visa, which can be a hassle. And just when you thought you had it figured out, the rules and requirements are subject to change at any time. So you'll want to double check with the Chinese embassy or consulate in your country, as well as the airline you'll find with. Okay, now you've got the paperwork done. Let's move on to the fun stuff. Beijing has plenty to offer, and today we're going to take a stroll through Tiananmen Square and the Forbidden City. Now, when it comes to transportation, I personally choose to take the express train and then transfer to the metro, which took around 40 minutes and cost around 35 RMB. However, if you're feeling adventurous enough, you can take a taxi or a bus, but beware of the traffic, it can be a nightmare. And do not forget your negotiation skills, as the prices can vary widely, depending on the time of day. Once you arrive, you'll be greeted by the vast expanse of Tiananmen Square, where you can people watch, walk around, and snap a selfie in front of Mao's mausoleum. Tiananmen Square is one of the largest public squares in the world, covering an area of over 100 acres. It has a rich history dating back over 500 years and has been the site of many significant events in Chinese history, including political protests, cultural celebrations and military parades. Since Tiananmen Square is just an open space, the time you spend there is really up to you. But to me, half an hour was pretty much enough. From Tiananmen, it's just a short walk to the Forbidden City. It is surrounded by a moat and a wall that's almost 8 meters high and 3.4 kilometers long. Interestingly, commoners and foreigners were forbidden from entering the palace during the Ming and Qing dynasties. The Forbidden City served as the imperial palace for 24 emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties from 15th to, to 20th century. The palace complex is one of the world's largest and most well-preserved ancient architectural wonders with over 9,000 rooms spanning 180 acres. So, unless you plan on setting up a camp there, you want to limit your visit to a few hours. A good rule of thumb is to allocate around 2 or 3 hours to explore the palace complex, which should give you enough time to see the highlights without feeling rushed. Oh, and by the by, before you head over to the Forbidden City, make sure you check out Bertolucci's uh, The Last Emperor film. It was actually shot right there, in the palace. Bertolucci was given complete freedom by the authorities of China to shoot in the Forbidden City, which had never before been opened up for use in Western film. I've loved this movie since I was a kid. It's such a sad but beautiful story about the life of Bu Yi, the last emperor of China and his experiences living in the palace like in prison. I really think that it's, it's definitely a must-see in my opinion, especially if you're heading to Beijing. And last but not least, so I have to tell you about something that happened during my visit to the palace. As my boyfriend and I were leaving the Forbidden City, two ladies approached us and introduced themselves as English teachers. They were friendly and engaging, but soon they started insisting that we join them for tea. Initially we thought that they were just being friendly, but then they became more insistent and even when we explained that uh, we were running late for our flight, it got us a bit worried and only later we learned about these scams, the notorious tea scammers. These guys are basically scam artists who target tourists and lure them into tea shops, claiming to offer a free tea tasting or cultural experience. Once you're inside, they'll pressure you to order more and more tea, 
with prices that can quickly escalate into the hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who would fall for that? But trust me, these scammers can be pretty convincing. And if you refuse to pay up, they can get pretty aggressive and even follow you out onto the street. So, be on the lookout for any overly friendly strangers who want to take you to a tea shop. And if you do get caught up in one of these scams, don't be afraid to make a scene and get out of there as quickly as possible. In summary, a layover in Beijing can be an exciting and memorable experience if you plan ahead and embrace the adventure. With a little bit of planning and a sense of adventure, you can explore some of the city's top attractions. So grab your walking shoes, your camera, and get ready to experience the history and culture of Beijing. Travel safe and stay tuned! <laughs>